and we do expect this number to go up uh, quite significantly. Now, when you take a look at all of the years, you will see that the average scoring by each grade, and this is important, say, if you want to know what should you be aiming for at a base minimum for your grade level, for below than grade four, there were 762 students. The average score was about nine. Uh, five, again, the score was about nine, even though 2,000 students took it uh, at that grade level. For grade six, it's again nine. Grade seven and eight, naturally, obviously, is a little higher at the average score of 10. Um, now, you might be wondering, why is the average score for grade six lower than the average score for a grade five or grade four? Well, um, if you are taking this test seriously, and I'm not just saying as a first attempt or as a, let me just see how this test is. If you're taking this test seriously at an early grade, then you are more likely to have a gifted child or a child who's already doing wonders at school, which is why you even opt to take it in the first place. That is why the score for say a grade four and grade five is actually slightly higher on average than somebody who takes it in grade six, right? And let's go on to the allocation of the modules. What topics will be covered in the AMC 8 series? Now, at Think Academy, um, we have the same modules and, and, and thankfully even the AMC 8. So for all parents who are at the Academy, uh, you, you have no reason to be stressed because all the topics are covered within the uh, semesters. And the module allocation is as follows. It is word problems, geometry, numbers and operations, combinatorics, counting and statistics, number theory, and finally the travel problem. As you can see, the main focus is on word problems, geometry. However, as I will show you in the future slides uh, coming up, um, not the future, but the upcoming slides, is that the proportion has changed. Word problems and geometry still make up a majority of the test. However, that has gone down in recent years and has actually been replaced with a significant increase in counting and probability, even at lower grades. Yes, that is correct. Even at grade five, and uh, you will be expected to get a, uh, will, will be expected to get, um, uh, to know probability, sorry. Uh, got distracted there. Other modules have been consistent in allocation. So if you look at all the other modules besides number operations, geometry, word problems, you will also notice that all the other uh, modules are there and they're equal in terms of their weight, uh, right? So they are equally important. Will score nine given achievement role. Uh, I will, uh, yes, let me answer all your questions towards the end. Uh, I will answer all of them. So if you have any questions as I go through the presentation, just drop in uh, and text me in the chat or, or to everyone else, no problem. I will answer everything in the end. So other modules have been consistent in terms of allocation. Now let's look at the proportion of distribution for the highest question volume, which is obviously from geometry and word problems. As you can see over the past years, it has reduced. It is decreasing in proportion. That being said, it is still the most uh, most uh, heavily weighted uh, type of question. The reason being is that for younger grades, grade five specifically, the application questions rely on profound analysis techniques. Now, the benefit of the doubt is given to the students that these are not developed completely until you reach grade six or seven. Second reason being specifically for geometry, the test recognizes that the different shapes and spatial sense is a skill that every student needs to know for these difficult geometry questions. However, there are a limited number of basic shapes, right? You can have different combinations of shapes, but the original bank of shapes is still the same, which reduces the possibility of, I guess, innovation in questions. So those are the two reasons that the questions have reduced in their density, however, still being the majority of the questions for geometry and word problems. As I said, this has been replaced by probability and counting as well as number theory. That has been an upward trend. Again, as you look at the data, you'll see that this is inconsistent, but um, broadly speaking, it is trending upwards. The reason being there's a large flexibility in these sort of questions, because for example, if you take a look at probability, there's not just one type of probability question, right? You have different events. Um, you have simple uh, games, but so many of them, the coin toss, uh, the dice, the table, so many different events that defer, that requires so much um, I would say such a different way of thinking. 
So because they, it is so flexible, it does receive a, uh, a larger proportion of questions, at least recently. And finally, for the remaining questions, it's pretty, uh, it's, it's, it's pretty much consistent, right? As you can see, year on year, it changes. But overall, all the other modules, um, they are pretty much the same. So they might change each year. However, broadly speaking, they are going to be covered at the same rate. Let's get into the question types. Now that I've given you a deep analysis of what kind of topics to expect, I will tell you what exact questions should you be studying? What exact topics should, be, should you be looking at for each module? Now, for the word problems specifically and geometry, you need to have the Pythagorean theorem down. There have been 11 questions in the past 10 years. Um, on the same note, similarity for geometry needs to be done at an un understood at a 100% level, right? Similarity, congruency needs to be done in, and including uh, the advanced formulas that are included in similarity, um, right? And that you can see, we have five questions in the past five years, so it's very important. Pretty much always shows up in the examination. Let's look at averages and percentages. In terms of word problems, averages have been accounting for 14 questions in the last 10 years, huge chunks. You can pretty much have one question on averages always. Same with percentages, 12 in the last 10. Um, uh, do note that percentages also includes mixture problems. So ratios and weights, for example, uh, if, if you're a little confused on what I mean, uh, it's not just typical percentages. So not just profit loss, those sort of things, but also um, if you have a solution that is threes to one mixed with water is to oil, then if we add X amount of oil, how does the proportion change and what percentage of oil do you have? Those sort of mixture problems that includes uh, ratios as well as percentages, that's included in, these, uh, in this allocation. When you look at the second tier of questions, so counting statistics and probability, you will see that there have been four questions from counting and ranking in the past five years and eight in the last eight for probability. Um, this is important because depending on the kind of school you were in, private, public, the level of that school, this will come across, or at least you'll face this at a different level. Probability, um, for example, at Think Academy, we do cover a grade four onwards, but I don't think this is the case. Actually, I know this is not the case for some of the schools. So probability, dices, coins, tables, questions have uh, are all need to, needed to be covered, including basic combinations. Now, the last category would be clever calculations and estimations. Um, this is more nitty gritty, I would say. Uh, the, these are topics that, that don't make a majority, but I would say are, are needed because they help you in other questions as well. For example, clever calculations. If you're given a problem like this, if you look at problem number five, you can do this in multiple ways. However, if you don't have the ability to pair up certain numbers, right? Make good pairs so you can uh, optimize the speed and accuracy, then you will not be able to do it in time. The challenge of this question is to do this in time. It's not the difficulty, right? So it's going to test you on time. And for that, you need to have some clever calculation, not just blindly doing it from left to right. Or as I tell my students, don't think like a donkey. <laughs> we are not uh, going to be awarded for how much work we can put in. We're awarded for how smart we can do our work. Finally, on the same note, estimation as well. Uh, you have your basic needs for estimation, uh, not just for estim pure estimation questions, but also for quick calculations, right? Uh, when you're looking at a word problem, you need to have the ability to look at the problem, simplify the numbers, and see what is the rough number that you're expected to arrive to. Uh, so estimation foundations need to be solidified, not just rounding estimation. Now, this is a rare case. However, I should put it out there. Um, also front end estimation. We covered this at the academy, both of those at an early stage. However, I know for a fact that schools look at rounding only and some schools don't even cover front end estimation. So make sure you get both of those down. Similar to divisibility rules. At the academy, we do cover divisibility rules all the way uh, from one through the end. Um, now, one thing that is important to note is that uh, all schools do cover divisibility rules, but the competition style questions do rely on more than just your basic rules. I'll give you an example. If you're given, how do we know, 
I'll give you an example of a question. Give me the largest number uh, possible that is four digits and is divisible by 12. Now, if you want to do that, of course, there's different techniques. You have to start with nine because it's a leading digit. But besides that, in terms of divisibility, because it's 12, you need to know that, okay, what is 12? 12 is four times three. So I need to check the divisibility of four and three, AKA this number needs to satisfy the divisibility rules for four and three. So make sure you do complex divisibility rules, not just your basic three, four, five, right? And prime factorization, uh, if you are at a lower grade, you might be encountering this. Hopefully you are. Uh, get that down because if you don't have a good foundation in this, then you will make silly mistakes as you go on. Sports competition. This is a good one because some students uh, and some parents, uh, shall I say, are not aware of this, right? You must be thinking, okay, I know geometry. I know word problems. What is sports competition? So if I had to classify it, it is a type of a word problem. However, it has a specific technique to solve that is less likely to be arrived through your usual methods in word problems, right? There's a special way of solving these questions. Um, and besides sports competition, I would also include other categories like chicken and rabbit, age problems. Um, although sports competition being the main one. These are word problems that have a very specific method of solving it. So because they're so niche, I have categorized them specific, like separately, also because they're covered uh, pretty extensively, right? Six in the past eight years. Logical reasoning, four in the past eight years. Um, I cannot categorize logical reasoning. This is something that's innate and will be learned through your, I guess, um, your foundations and all the other modules. If you're doing well in all of those, then hopefully this is developing naturally, organically as well. Speed and time diagram. This is more rare. Uh, but I do feel the need to point it out because students often skip this because they don't think it is tested. It is. In 2019, we saw a speed time distance diagram. Um, most kids understand speed, distance, time, but make sure you throw in some graphs in there as well so that they are covered on all their bases.